open source project, Bionote, and the problem we try to solve is this. So this is the <laughs> amount of data that's being generated in genomics, and it's gonna surpass everything. It's gonna surpass YouTube, Twitter, as astronomy, anything. It's coming from new uh, improvements in DNA sequencing technologies, and um, what Bionode is trying to do is modular and universal bioinformatics. So this project is trying to build small tools that follow the unique philosophy of doing uh, one thing well, that provide highly reusable code and tools uh, for analyzing genomic data, that can scale using streams, and that runs everywhere. And to do this, um, we are using Node.js because it's highly modular, uh, it has a very open community on GitHub, and if you don't believe me, this is the, the number of uh, modules uh, contributed to the NPM repository compared to all the, all the other languages. So the barrier to entry is very low and it's very easy to contribute to Node.js. Um, and Node.js provides a native implementation of streams, which I'll explain uh, what it is. And since it's JavaScript, you can run it anywhere. You can run on, on your server, on your supercomputer, or you can just run the same code on a browser. And this started during my PhD at Warm Lab uh, here in London, uh, Queen Mary University. And I'm studying the genetic diversity of insects. And my problem was I had, whoops, sorry. I was involved in some web projects. Uh, so I, I was rewriting code uh, from other languages into JavaScript. So I decided to just write JavaScript and get it to work everywhere. The other issue is um, for my PhD, I was downloading terabytes of data. And I found that using Node.js uh, was quite a good tool for doing that. And then the other thing is in bioinformatics, we uh, create very complicated um, data analysis pipelines. And I think using Node.js streams make it um, very easy uh, to build these things. So what are Node.js streams? Streams, uh, you can have readable streams, transform streams, and writable streams. And basically what happens is you have your data <laughs> coming from a readable stream, and then it gets to a transform stream and can be transformed to something and written somewhere. And the way this looks in the code um, is this. So you have the, the readable stream can be reading a file, doing a request on a server, just reading standard out on the terminal, and then you use the pipe function to the transform stream, and that could be a parser, could be an analysis, could be anything, and then you pipe to a writable stream, a file, standard out. And one issue you might have when you're trying to implement these things is that if you have a big chunk of data that's blocking your pipeline, when you get new data, you're not ready to process it, <laughs> so the data gets lost. And so the way Node.js tries to solve this is by using full streams. So what happens is if the streams uh, are slow or blocked, when you try to do push data in Node.js, the data gets buffered. And if the buffer is full, everything upstream stops until the data gets processed. And once downstream it returns true, then you use a callback function in JavaScript to ask for more data. And using this pattern, everything can self-regulate automatically. So you can also do push data several times. So if you have, uh, if you have like a big chunk of data and you're doing uh, several steps to it, you can like do several push events, and then you can, once you're done, do the callback. And so what I showed was transform streams, but you can also have duplex streams, and duplex streams are just writable and readable streams merged together as a single object, even though they can be doing things uh, completely independent. So the writable stream could be writing to a database and the readable stream reading from the database or from another place. Uh, but when you access it, you access it as a single object. Or it could be like a server too, doing request and response. And uh, another kind of streams you can have in Node.js are pass-through <laughs> streams. So in a pass-through stream, uh, 
nothing happens to the data, but you observe the data. So you can count it. <laughs> you can do some metrics. To it. Uh, and this is also very useful if you're trying to fork your streams. So if you're trying to um, use the same data for two different things, you can read, for example, here, bird number 42. And when you get it, you can send it to another place. And so you can have, uh, at this point, two different analyses going on with the same data. <laughs> <laughs> And so this is very useful when you're trying to do bioinformatics pipeline. So this is just an example of a simple pipeline. Uh, and as you can see, it's kind of a mess. Uh, and using this kind of uh, approach uh, makes it very, uh, very easy and powerful to implement these things. So we had a Google Summer of Code student, uh, Julian, working on a workflow engine in JavaScript to try to make this even more uh, easier and uh, to do for bioinformatics. To, build this complex pipeline. But the tool we developed is called BioNode Locker Mill, can be used in any data intensive field. And this is the, this is the BioNode community. So we are still a very small community, but we have some collaborations with other uh, projects, like for example, DNA Digest, we do hackathons together. Repositive is a search engine for genomic data. DAT is doing version control of data and distribution and BioJS is doing visualization of file data. So what I intend to do with this fellowship is to make this project more self-sustainable. So try to organize more hackathons, to get more people involved, especially the JavaScript developers, to show them that actually you don't need to have a deep genomic knowledge to contribute to this. Uh, improve the documentation and make the project more <coughs> useful and try to apply for grants to get more full-time developers, like Julian uh, was for three months. Make it more useful, so try to reach specific labs and uh, institutions to see if the, we can um, add features that they might uh, think are missing from the project. Um, keep, keep improving and working on the existing code, and make it more collaborative, so try to collaborate with all the other uh, projects we are already collaborating and some others like the Common Workflow Language to try to build something uh, very useful for open genomics. And if you're interested in this, or if you want to learn more about Node.js streams, I have a session tomorrow at uh, 11. Thank you. <laughs>